Hello my friends, we are just days away from the release of Starfield and I just couldn't be more excited. I want to take one more look at everything that we know about ships in Starfield just to get us excited. We know that you start with the Frontier, your first ship that has two crew seats and a limited jump range. But this is the ship that you begin your adventures in. We also know that at most major ports there's a starport and in that starport there is a spaceship engineer. And it is at these spaceports and starship engineers where you can modify, upgrade, and sell your starship. It is here where you can see all the aspects of your ship. Your fuel capacity, your hull capacity, your cargo capacity, your shield capacity, your reactor, your crew members, jump, your shield. You can have up to three active weapon systems hotkeyed on your ship. Whether it's registered or not, what the ship's value is, and what the ship's mass is. In the Starfield Direct video, you can see here that I pulled as many starships as I could from the video to show you the differences in them, both the size and how they're configured, uh, just to give you a quick overview of, and some ideas of what you can build with your own ship. As you can see here from the ships from the Starfield Direct video, they all have roughly under 2,000 mass, considering these ships to be fairly small, but we do know that you can make them in different sizes. And I will speak a little bit more to that point in a few minutes. But I do want to underline the incredible amount of variations in the spaceships. Even just looking at the cockpits, there are clearly different styles, which I assume you get at different spaceports. In any event, you're going to want to talk to this guy. This is someone I'm sure we're going to get to know and love. It is here where you can repair your ship. You can also view and modify your ship. You can see what ships they have for sale, or you can sell things there, or he can give you some information on where to go to find crew. Anyway, they say every single part of the Starship is upgradable and modifiable, and that looks fantastic to me. And each component that you add to your ship gives the ship different bonuses and different abilities, like might be increase your cargo, or the amount of crew members you can have, or the type of crew members you can have. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of parts of the ship. There's cowlings, shield generators, dockers, fuel tanks, grav drives, weapons, habitats engines, cockpits, cargo hold, reactor, bay, landing gear, and there's probably a bunch more that we'd, we'd see on other ship designs, not just this one. In a recent interview with producer Jamie Mallory, we learned details about the ship builder's ship maps. Apparently the same team that developed snap maps for Doom 2016's release, the same team, or say members of the team, have been brought over to Starfield to work on the ship design system. And thank you to Danielle Rocha for giving us a good look into the Doom 2016 snap maps and seeing the possibility of similarities in Starfield's snap map-like ship editor. I believe with this level of expertise and ease of use, the ship editing process is going to be just a fantastic time. So I want to get back to a point that I started earlier, basically saying size matters. Here we go. So in Starfield, looking at the ship editor, I counted out the number of dots on the floor of the map grid, and there are 21 in each direction coming out from the center. And it also appears that we can go at least 21 vertically, so look at how tall that ship is. That thing's amazing. We also know that you can whip out the spray paint and color any piece of your ship to taste. Color is good. It does seem like there's going to be some Fallout-style crossover on the tech tree combos, like you might need chemistry in order to do ballistics and that sort of thing. Now, also, that there's missile weapon system technology, so those are upgradable particle beam weapon systems, upgradable, yeehaw, and robotics upgradable, which are used in combat. Another thing we know from the video is that multiple corporations make ship components, so there's a huge variety with each type of component, offering different visual styles, ratings, and functionality to your ship design. Nova Galactic. Well, they seem to make cowling. Relodyne. White Dwarf 2030 engine. Cool. Slayton Aerospace. Apparently they make grav drives. Excellent. Horizon Defense. Mahler 104 L Auto Cannon. Light Scythe. Well, if that doesn't sound like a weapon shop. Dogstar. Star Freighter Logistics Cargo Pods. Very cool. Stroud Eklund. Well, that makes me think of Briggs and Stratton, but they make bays. Maybe a lot of people do. Who knows? Deimos. Seems that Deimos makes bridges. The DS-31. Now, overall, it seems that each world offers different parts, and it might mean it's different styles. So you might find different grav drives in New Atlantis. Maybe Deimos' headquarters are on Sidonia, where they be make the best bridges for the ships in the whole galaxy. Maybe you can get the best landing gear and shield generators in Aquila City. Neon, perhaps, could offer some wildest interior options for your ships. And in Red Mile, perhaps you can get some really crazy weapons, something that's really, really expensive, really rare. Now, you can go ahead and hire a crew, and that's super cool. So you can pick up these people that are going to add functionality and bonuses to the operations of your ship. Uh, you do have to create the space for them, but here, like Sarah Morgan, for example, she's got, what, Astrodynamics plus four, a four-star. Sam Cole's got piloting at four. Very cool. Four is a max, by the way. Barrett has Starship Engineering at four. 
So there's the crew roster menu, and here's where you can see all of your hirelings, if you will. And very much like in Fallout 4 with the settlement system, you can assign your crewmates to your ship, your other ships within your hangar. Maybe they can operate autonomously, who knows? And your bases, which can be used to obviously make you money and produce things either for your ship or, that you can, or exotic or unique things. Who knows? We're going to have to find out. I'm really looking forward to it. It's only a couple days away. Either way, we know it's going to take a lot of resources and a lot of money to both attain and upgrade your ship. So I'm just really, really excited. I can't wait to get into my ship, get out there into it, punch up the grav drive, start to learn how to fly and fight with my ship. And the trick's going to be really actually learning how to fly the ship while engaging the power systems. For example, starting out with lasers until you blast away somebody else's shields. Uh, then you go over to ballistic and missiles to be able to wipe out their hull in order to either board or destroy the other vessel. Additionally, you can allocate power to engine, engines, shield, and your graph drive. And you need to get out of dodge in a hurry. And it was a super happy plus to see a VATS-like system that they put into the game. And I figured it would be in there somewhere. And here it is, targeting control systems, where when you're flying close to a ship, you can zoom in on it and take out the individual components of it and make it easier for you to destroy it. However, I'm pretty certain I'm going to be doing a pirate, you know, where you board and you take ships and you can keep the ships or scrap the ships or who knows what you can do with the ships. But I want to try a life of piracy. Yo -ho, Yo ho ho. But before I do that, I will probably start out as a bounty hunter, as shown in the Settled Systems video that Bethesda put out. It's really cool, you should check it out. Bethesda showing that through a life of bounty hunting, uh, you can certainly gain a great deal of money and at some point you may even be able to get your own place, like actually like a house or an apartment or a condo or something in a, one of the cities or any of the cities in the, across the galaxy, who knows? One thing we do know is that the game is coming out on September 6th and if you pre-order you can get it up to five days early, so that means you could be getting it this week and playing it and that's fantastic. So go ahead and get your pre-orders in for one of the most highly anticipated and exciting looking games to ever come out. Starfield should be a home run and I look forward to playing it. Play it day one with Xbox Game Pass. Dad's Gone Bad Gaming.